Sydney Donna, Arizona, it's a crisp, sunny spring day along Highway 89A and we're headed toward the spectacular red rock formations that made the area famous. The top is down, we just passed a squiggly road sign warning of tasty miles ahead, and I'm desperate to unleash the handcrafted, 4.0 litre twin turbo V8 monster lurking under the long, sloping hood of the 2018 Mercedes AMG GT Roadster. There's only one catch, two cars that won't move the hell over. It's absolute torture. Suddenly, a tiny stretch of passing lane appears. With the AMG Dynamic Select dial turned to Sport Plus, my foot goes to the floor. The boost gauge instantly pins, the turbo is spent furiously, and the 7-speed dual clutcher kicks down as the grumbling V8 is finally let off its chain. It is on. We begin our mountain attack sequence and the exhaust note scuttle, baritone roar echoes into the canyon. We're carving up the twisty asphalt Jinsu style and the GT roads tour utterly unfazed, its power bands staying in its sweet spot, its AMG tuned suspension keeping the car balanced into the tighterises, and its adaptive ratio steering offering up more than ample feedback. This is what the crew in Affolterbach made this car for. And just like that we roll up on more four-wheeled roadblocks. Damn. We pump the roadster stout brakes with 14.2 inch perforated discs all around, 15.4 inches at the front for the harder edged, higher spec GTC, with carbon ceramics optional for both, the exhaust crackles and pops, and our fun run ends all too soon. But hey. The sun's still beaming into the GT Roadster's elegantly trimmed cabin, now with 100% more beige if you desire, Mercado beige Napa leather is an option, and we've got its impressive Burmester sound system turned up, so it's not all bad. I dial it back to comfort, softer suspension and more relaxed transmission, steering, and engine response, and we take in the stunning scenery unfolding before us on the slow roll into sea dinner. So far, we've spent our drive in the base version of the Roadster, the other being the aforementioned GTC, which cribs several elements from the Trackstar version of AMG's two-seat Halo model, the GTR. But lest you think the base GT Roadster is a slouch, we've got 469 reasons and a claimed 0 to 60 miles per hour time of 3.9 seconds why you should think again. The GT and GTC drop tops are the latest variants to join Mercedes AMG's GT lineup, making it seven in all for the division's only exclusive model, with one more on the way, all but certain to be a four door version. The roadsters were in the cards since the onset of the GT's development, so the extra bracing applied in order to further strengthen their aluminum intensive architecture and keep them as free from chassis flex as possible was meticulously planned. And as is the case with the rest of the GT lineup, which is starting to resemble the 911's dizzying array of variations, they both offer an impressive performance envelope while appealing to slightly different customers. On the way up the mountain, we spent ample time traversing swaths of Arizona's well-maintained freeways and the GT Roadster easily ate them up with a suspension that's tight but far from punishing at any setting. You'll want to keep it out of comfort if you're planning to be aggressive, though as throttle response was a tad lazy. The cabin's amenities are befitting a car in this range, with impressive trim and stitching accents, the Burmester sound setup, and a version of Benz's now familiar and logically laid out, dial control common infotainment system. An interesting feature available for both cars is the AMG Track Pace iPhone app, which hooks into the car to record lap times and even takes video of your hot laps. The AMG Sport seats are an acquired taste, however. While they're plenty supportive during aggressive cornering and now come with the S-Garf system that blows air around your neck, they can also feel pretty stiff in normal driving situations. It's also a little tight inside overall, with cargo space at a premium in the cabin and the trunk, though that's somewhat expected of a roadster. Flatten the pedal and the twin turbo 8 bellows in your ears as you easily reach air messing speeds in mere seconds. And while it can feel like a big car at times, especially during confined city cruising, out on the open road is where the GT Roadster does its best work. 
Speed limits are simply unfair when you're in a car so clearly geared to run all day long at triple digits. As you'd expect, Mercedes AMG has spent an inordinate amount of time making sure its GT cars perform at the highest levels. To that end, both cars utilize elements like the active air shutters that lurk behind AMG's mean, gleaming chrome 15 rib Panamericana grille to aid airflow and cooling and are fitted with an AMG sports suspension. The GTC gets AMG's up-level ride control system with active dampers. Weight-saving tricks including a trunk made of composite materials help keep the gain over their coupe siblings to roughly 77 pounds in the GT and 110 in the GTC. The GT Roadster is 3,683 pounds, the GTC 3,825. Then there's the stinking 4.0-litre twin-turbo 8. Rated at 469 horsepower and 465 pounds to feet of torque in the GT and 550 horsepower and 502 pounds to feet in the GTC, thanks primarily to the turbo boost being turned up. Both the variants are hooked up to AMG's 7 speed dual clutch automatic, although the GTC gets a taller ratio in first gear, a lower one in seventh, and a taller final drive. The GT gets a mechanical rear differential with AMG's quick responding electronic rear diff fitted to the GTC. Looking to launch? The GTC has a feature that lets you step on the brake with your left foot as you mash the accelerator while adjusting the revs using the shift paddles. Then let off the brake and you're off to a reported 3.7 second 0 to 60 miles per hour sprint. As we approached the midway point of the drive, we figured it was a good time to see how the lightweight, magnesium, steel, and aluminum constructed soft top operates. We hit the button at about 31 miles per hour and it went up quickly with zero drama. Benz quotes 11 seconds and it was easily that fast. With it up, its triple line fabric design was effective in quelling outside noise, while headroom and visibility were acceptable. It's not the prettiest looking top when it's up but you can get it in red, black, and, oh yes, beige. The GT Roadsters are best viewed with the top down of course, and according to AMG design of Itlessons, the cars feature a positive and strong stance and are really, really low, wide and aggressive. In said one of the team's primary design goals was to develop a car with a high belt line and a low rear end. Mission accomplished. Most of the rear of the GTC Roadster is similar to the GTR, with a wider track, 2.2 inches, bigger tires and 20 inch rims at the rear, and different bodywork to accommodate. The GTC also employs AMG's rear wheel steering from the GTR as part of the car's upgraded suspension setup. Sadly, our time in the GTC was primarily limited to 100 plus miles of freeway driving so we didn't get a chance to experience rear steer to any extent. But our man Georg Katcher drove the GTR, here's how he described its handling at speed on a track, the AMG GTR's variable rate steering systems, plural, deserve a separate chapter. Depending on speed, mode, and lateral acceleration, driver input has complex consequences. At the inception of a slide, for instance, Steering effort is reduced so that correction maneuvers require only minor adjustments, adhering to the line is playfully easy, and lock can be unwound pleasingly early. Above 62 miles per hour, the system switches from counter steer to synchronicity. Similar to the setups in the 911 Turbo and Lamborghini Centene area, this transition is executed progressively and smoothly. In race mode, Direction changes occur with physical immediacy, in comfort, however, the wheels turn with burst sidewalls. Further enhancing this by why muscle tensing exercise for the hind legs are over a dozen uniball joints in lieu of the commonly used rubber mounts. We did get enough time in the GTC Roadster to discern that it's perceptibly quicker and brakes harder than its GT cousin. It also features a race mode that further sharpens the car for track duty is fitted with the brand's performance exhaust, and comes with a more upscale interior including a leather and microfiber trimmed steering wheel, among other special touches. The GTC is obviously the edgier car, the GT is slightly more of a grand tourer, but both are eminently capable.
it really boils down to personal preference and maybe pocketbook considerations. There are other super high performance convertibles out there with more established reputations and different setups that some may find more appealing. But as is the case with the rest of its GT line, Mercedes AMG's GT and GTC Roadsters have an appeal all their own, especially when the twisty road ahead is clear of four wheeled obstacles. 2018 Mercedes AMG GT and GTC Roadster specifications on sale fall 2017 price $125,395 slash $157,995 base GT GTC engine 4.0 liters twin turbo dock 32 valve V6 469 horsepower at 6,000 revolutions per minute. 465 pounds to feed at 1,700 to 5,000 revolutions per minute, GT, 5,750 to 6,750 revolutions per minute, 502 pounds to feed at 1,900 to 5,750 revolutions per minute, GTC transmission 7-speed twin clutch auto layout 2-door, two 2-passenger, two front engine, AWD convertible EPA mileage 15 21st mile per gallon. City slash highway LXWXH 178.9 179.2 by 76.3 79.0 by 49.6 in GT slash GTC wheelbase 103.5 in weight 3 comma 683 slash 3825 pounds GT slash GTC 0 to 60 miles per hour 3.9 slash 3.7 seconds GT slash GTC top speed 188 196 mile per hour. GT slash GTC.